Hey, before I start talking about self-sabotage and procrastination, I want to let you know that I very, very briefly mention substance abuse and self-harm. That's all I do, I don't even talk about these topics, I just mention them in the context of self-sabotage. I just want you guys to know, if this triggers you in any way, or the topic of self-sabotage triggers you, please do not watch this video and take care of yourself, okay? Thank you. Hey, today I want to talk about self-sabotage and procrastination. This is something that I struggle with myself and I've done a lot of reflection and introspective work on this over the past few years. So I feel like I actually have some valuable stuff to say about this topic. I am a massive self-saboteur in many different ways. From being distracted easily to procrastination to completely falling off the wagon and stopping drawing altogether. Sometimes it gets so bad, I just completely shut down and I don't do any work, any drawing or painting not even for myself anymore because I get blocked by my own brain. So later in this video I want to give you some tools and active steps that you can take to implement positive changes into your life but I think it's important that we talk about the psychology of procrastination and self-sabotage first because even though there are some surface things that you can do for some instant relief for the long term, it's super crucial to understand why you're self-sabotaging. Please keep in mind that I am by no means a psychologist and everything I'm going to say in this video I learned from going to therapy myself as well as reading up on this topic and honestly reflecting a lot. <laughs> so self-sabotage can be defined as any behavior that goes against yourself, your goals and or your values. And it can present itself in many different ways. Some of them might be procrastination or avoidant behavior or low self-esteem, but also substance abuse or self-harm. For the sake of this video, we're only going to look at self-sabotage in the form of procrastination um, and avoidant behavior because it's what's relevant to our journey as artists and because I'm really not qualified at all to talk about anything else. Procrastination in its core doesn't really have anything to do with being lazy. No matter what anyone else is telling you or what you might be telling yourself, we procrastinate if the task we're supposed to do invokes feelings of anxiety or any other types of distress. By procrastinating, we allow ourselves to stop these feelings of distress, which gives us immediate relief and feels good. Of course, if it gets to a point where all you ever do is procrastinate because you want that short-term relief, you'll find that you navigated yourself in a corner that's kind of tough to get out of. I've totally been there, and I still am a lot of times. I actually have a anxiety disorder and often it's just so much easier to avoid everything I'm scared of instead of facing what is making me so nervous. But in the long term you want to dissolve this anxiousness that makes you procrastinate and move past those fears. And the only way to do this is by facing them. And Experiencing that most of the times, honestly, our fears are completely unwarranted. But this takes time though, and we can't be our bravest selves all the time. So definitely be gentle with yourself and push yourself, but only just enough. Often the things we're scared of that make us want to ignore them and procrastinate are unconscious fears. Something about that task triggers something in us. So recognizing what it is that is triggering you in that specific task is super important. So let's say you're like me and you're incredibly scared of starting new illustrations that are out of your comfort zone. Or you constantly put off finishing your portfolio or sending out emails and applying to jobs. I realized I'm scared of all of those things because I am incredibly scared of failing. 
and paradoxically I'm also really scared of succeeding as well. I'm scared of failing because I confuse success at work with self-worth and when I fail even in a professional context I feel like a failure overall. Fixing this means fixing my poor self-worth, showing myself more care and love. And I'm scared of succeeding because, frankly, I've never been the type to be successful at anything, really. I'm used to living under my potential and that feels familiar and not scary. So something in me jams the brakes anytime I get some kind of momentum. Because it's scary to step out of what you know, right? I am aware of these fears and that's how I can actively work against and with them. So my advice would be to get to know yourself a little better. Try to explore why you procrastinate so much. Talking to someone you trust about this and getting their input might help. Or you could start writing a journal. And remember, this might take some time and you won't figure it out all at once. And honestly, that's 100% okay and how it's supposed to be. In the meantime, you can make sure to set yourself up for success as much as you can. So these following quote-unquote fixes will be on the surface level and definitely help if you're looking for more structure, but it might not be a long-term fix for the underlying and possibly psychological issues here, okay? Just, you know, just keep that in mind. My first tip is to eliminate distractions as much as you can. I'm talking turning off your phone or installing an app that will limit your screen time. Limiting the time that I spent on social media also helped me a lot to get more focused and clear-headed. These apps are literally designed to draw us in and keep us distracted. So set some time aside each day for deep focus work without a phone. Another way to clear your mind is to keep a clean work or study environment. Make sure your desk space or wherever you go to draw feels welcoming and comfortable, but is structured and simple enough that it won't distract you. For me, that looks like keeping the surface of my desk as clean as possible. So yes, I will actually take some time every day to clean the space from unnecessary junk that piles up. Because it does every single day. But I also allow some room for things that spark joy or inspire me. For example, hanging some prints on the wall next to my monitor or my little velociraptor friend. That one. I uh, have a confession to make. I love lists and schedules and data and tables. I just love organizing so much <laughs> because because I am an incredibly messy person. I'm constantly feeling overwhelmed. I'm extremely forgetful and all over the place with my thoughts all the time. So to help me with that, I started making lists. Lots and lots of lists and folders and calendars and whatever I need to put some structure into my life. And you might be different in this way, but if you're chaotic like I am, maybe get a planner and make some to-do lists. And lastly, something that really helped me procrastinate less was making a plan. Yeah, I know that sounds a bit unintuitive, and boring even, but it helped me a lot. And my plan, by the way, changes every five minutes. <laughs> but at least I have a plan and I know what I need to do next at all times. And that kind of helps with getting over the fear of just doing anything, really. It's easier to start and just do whatever it is you want to do when you know what steps you have to take. So figure out what it is you want to do and how to get there. You want to get into character design? 
then write down what you need to practice for that and schedule some time. If you want to get better at painting materials, then do some research, make a plan and stick to it as long as you can. And the second that plan doesn't work for you anymore, because life is life and things shift around constantly, then you ditch that plan and just make a new one. And if you find that after all of this, you still procrastinate and put off drawing or practicing, maybe it's time to ask yourself if you're really in love with being an artist or just the romanticized ideal of what that might look like. But maybe that's a topic for another time. I hope I could give you some helpful input on this topic of procrastination and self-sabotage. I sure as hell haven't figured it all out yet, but I'm constantly working on it and learning and growing and it's getting better all the time. So hang in there, you got this. Bye bye. Oh, and if you feel comfortable, I would love for you to leave a comment and share your experience with procrastination and self-sabotage. I would really love to see how you guys deal with it and maybe you have found more ways that I haven't figured out yet that would help me as well. So I'd really appreciate that. Thank you.